A very good day to all. I shall begin with a few thought-provoking words spoken by writers. Women who challenge us and persuade us to think deeply about our lives and the society that created it for us. Let me start. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking that they don't have any Alice Walker. I do not see myself as a footnote to someone else's life. Martha Gelhen. Our histories cling to us. We are shaped by where we come from. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. No need to hurry. No need to sparkle. No need to be anybody but oneself. Virginia Woolf. I am no bird. And no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will. Charlotte Bronte. To every one of our viewers, the content of every book written by a woman is not only the reverberation of a heart, 
but also the reverberation of her gender that reads her. Women relate deeply to women's writing. This is because the writer and the reader have gone through the same ups and downs of life, faced the same obstacles, overcome the suppression that blocked her or otherwise, grew strong with the same bitterness of failure and basked in the limelight of hard-earned success. A woman sees the universe in a way unlike any other. Her perception of the human being generates from her understanding of the universe. She is the spirit and soul of karma. Her energy is creation. I invite all our viewers to watch and enjoy the small token of appreciation for women writers in India and all over the globe. Put forward by the children of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavans Vidya Mandiri Rinyalakuda under the guidance of their English teachers. My sincerest Women's Day wishes to every woman. May your faith in yourself take you a long way. Happy Women's Day. Hello everyone. Of all the celebrated women of modern India, Sarojini Naidu's name is at the top of Indian English literature. She led a very active literary life and her first volume of poetry, The Golden Threshold, was published in the year 1905 and it was followed by The Bird of the Time. In 1914, she was elected as Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. Her collected poems, all of which she wrote in English, have been published under the title The Sceptered Flute and the Feather of the Dawn. Her writing style is very simple and traditional. In her poems, we find uh, the vivid use of rich images and her love for nature. She is also appreciated as a great lyricist. Her lyrics are very melodious. They have unsurpassable sweetness and beauty. And on this day, on this Women's Day, two of our students, Ranjana and Niranjana, have come up with their video presentations that throw light on Sarojini Naidu's life. Let us all watch and enjoy it. Thank you. My dear countrymen, I charge you to restore to your women their ancient rights. For as I have said, it is we and not you who are the real nation builders. Without our active cooperation, all your congress and conferences are in vain. Educate your women and the nation will take care of about Saroji Naidu and her contributions towards the society. The history of India has been written by many great personalities who have even sacrificed their life towards serving humanity and the poor. Saroji Naidu was one such lady who was an Indian political activist and a poet. She was a great supporter of civil rights, women's emancipation and anti-imperialistic ideas and has also played a significant role in India's struggle from the colonial rule of the British East India Company. Saroji Naidu's birth anniversary on 13 February every year is observed as a National Women's Day in India. Saroji Naidu is also known as the Nightingale of India or Bharat Kokila. She was the first women president of the Indian National Congress and had worked a lot towards improving the position of women in the Indian society. She was born on 13 February 1879 in a Bengali family from Hyderabad. She completed her education from London, Cambridge and Madras. After working in England as a suffragist, she was drawn towards the Indian National Congress movement in India against the British Raj. She was also awarded the title Kesari Hind from the British government for her remarkable work 
during the plague epidemic in India, which he later on returned due to the ongoing protests over the Jallianwala Bag massacre. Saroji Naidu was also listed among the 150 leading ladies by the University of London in 2018. She died on 2nd March 1949 due to a cardiac arrest. She was the first lady governor of Uttar Pradesh in 1947 and used to write poems based on the themes of romance, patriotism and tragedy. Saroji Naidu is remembered for her great works towards the society and the upliftment of women. The National Women's Day is celebrated every year to give a tribute to Saroji Naidu's remarkable journey and to get inspired by her fierceness to fight against the evil. On this day, let us remember her contributions and get inspired and thus strengthen womanhood. Thank you. by the wonderfully talented writer Kiran Desai. She has illustrated the reality of female oppression and their rights through her characters. The well-known writer who won the Booker Prize at the age of 35 in 2006 for the international bestseller The Inheritance of Loss. watch an imaginary chat show between Anida Desai and her daughter Kiran Desai. Hello everyone, I'm Kiran Desai. Now today is Women's Day and I'm finally sitting down with my mother to have a conversation with her. It's been such a long time and uh, we don't have a lot of time today to do this but still I'm really excited. Uh, so the very first thing I want to ask you is that how was life for young Anita Desai in old Delhi who's trying to take care of her kids but still wanting to do her favorite thing that's like what is um, Well, it was difficult for me as a young mother in old Delhi to take care of her kids and also to follow my passion. But, you know, the Delhi you see right now wasn't like that before so it was quite difficult but I know what I wanted. I really enjoyed doing writing. So I put myself into it. I worked hard for it. And my hard work paid success. It's absolutely. Good. I mean, I very clearly remember that there's these shelves with a lot of books, and you would have your own space where you would sit down and write. I mean, it's a part of your routine. Like after we going out, that's what we do. And I just absolutely remember that. It's just such a nostalgia I mean, right now. Now, see, another thing I want to ask you is about uh, feminism and women empowerment. I do think that so many people have news about it, but it's well, what? See, I don't have so much knowledge about feminism, but what I love to see is a world where we don't need feminism anymore, where there will be equal opportunity for all genders. And yeah, that's what I wanted. We don't, we don't actually don't need feminism. 
But nowadays, so many kids are listening to me, misunderstood about the word feminism, and that is what they do that is in the society. And I'm very grateful for that. Women empowerment, and I think you know much more about women empowerment and feminism than me, so you can say something about that. I mean. So, uh, women empowerment, I do love to see women supporting each other because women are always portrayed as like being envious and then jealous of each other but supporting each other is something that what I would call is like true women empowerment but it's just, it's not something that you can see in society and I'm very regretful again, just like you, very regretful about that um, see, what would be the message that you would like to give to all these women in the 20s trying to make a decision in their life. I think it's very difficult at that time. I was just saying, See, this is not the message for the woman of 20s there, but also for everyone in the All I want to say is that in our society, women are inspired to become a beautiful wife or get into marriage, taking care of their kids, but that doesn't matter. That's not the case. You should put yourself first. Learn to put yourself into first and get educated. Um, you know, take care, taking care of kids is not that important. <laughs> I mean, yourself is important. Right? You have to put yourself first. And uh, I think that's what a lot of women don't do in our society right now. And financial independence is also something that women need in their life right now. And you put us through it. You put us through the education. And uh, we just, we're able to do what we love to do and still make a living and we're really grateful for that. I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> so this question was actually asked by one of your fans and uh, this truly relates to the one that I asked you this way. So the question is that um, you obviously have been shortlisted for your work in the industry and uh, it basically describes the role and status of women in our society and how do you think it has changed over the course of Certainly, there has been change. If you go out on the street, you can't help but be embraced with a number of women walking, catch the girls hiding their by sandals. Yet, they continue to play a very traditional role in society. Because in India, tradition and modernity go hand in hand. But still, there are many rape cases and discrimination against women. And that is not still do that set women as human beings. We should live their lives. Anyways, I have a question for you. You have received the man Booker Prize for your work that in helping sectors. So how do you think that this is going to impact on your personal life and I mean you would sort of to away all the anxiety and doubt of kind of my things and um, you know, for me, it is hard to get published. Like, even if you are an established author, it's always difficult to get published. Uh, but I live by living out of this. And uh, even though I love it, sometimes it's difficult. And uh, I even had to take up jobs. I had to take up most uh, two teaching jobs. Um, so, yes. I really enjoy it. And I always get it. I'm very grateful for this. And yes, um, you have finally come to an end of our interview which is just absolutely exciting and we just really talking to you and um, I just wish happy women's day to everyone safe and healthy and for your listening happy women's day My name is Balamani Abin and in accordance to Women's Day, I will be reciting for you a poem. language of southern India. 
Now, for more of an in-depth look into the confessional poet of India, Kamala Das, I would like to call upon my friend Devika. It is probably because I have some courage to be what I am, and I don't see my faults as faults. I see them as characteristics, strengths too. Why not if you realize that you are only a human being? These are the words of one of the most prominent feminist voices in the post-colonial era of India, Kamala Das. To her Malayalam readers, she was Madhavi Kuti, and to her English patrons, she was Kamala Das. Kamala Das was born on 31st March 1934. A part of her childhood was spent in Punayur Kolam, Kerala, and the other part in Calcutta, where her father was posted for work. Kamala Das belongs to a family considered the literary royalty of Kerala. Her mother, Balam Niyama, was a famous poet and her grandmother, Nalapata Narayanamana, a respected writer. Kamala Das's childhood, as described in the autobiography, was very culturally enriched. Her fascination with writing began at a very young age, watching her elders immersed in work. She was married off to Madhav Das, a bank employee, at the age of 15 and moved to Bombay with her husband. On being a female writer in that day and age, she said, a woman had to prove herself to be a good wife, a good mother, before she could become anything else. And that meant years and years of waiting. That meant waiting to the grave years. I didn't have time to wait. I was impatient. So, after all the courts were done, she sat in the night and wrote till the morning. With her poems, she tried to give voice to a generation of women who were confined to their households. She portrayed the women in her poems as humans with desires, pains and emotions just like men. When we read her books, we feel as if she was born to write. Writing gushed forth from her, revealing her various avatars. Kamala Das went on to produce what is considered some of the best works in modern Indian literature. Some of her notable works in English include the novel Alphabet of Lust, a collection of her short stories, Patmakdi the Harlot, and a compilation of her poems, Summer in Calcutta. In Malayalam, they include Bailakala Smaranagal, Nirmadam and many more. In 1973, she released her autobiography, Endekatha, in Malayalam. On account of her contribution to the poetry in our country, she earns the label the mother of modern Indian English poetry. She has also been likened to literary greats like Sylvia Plant because of the confessional style in her writing. On being asked why her books struck many people, she believed that it never actually did and she said that she was merely being vocal about the things that had been happening for years. Her literary works earned her a lot of recognition and won her numerous accolades. She won PEN's Asian Poetry Prize in 1963, Kerala Sahitya Academy Award in 1969, and Kendra Sahitya Academy Award in 1985. She was even shortlisted for the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1984. She converted to Islam in 1999. On 31st May 2009, Kamala Das passed away at the age of 75. Her life was paid homage in the Malayalam biopic, Aami. Despite being a controversial writer, Kamala Das remains as a beloved writer among the people of Kerala as well as the admirers of modern Indian literature. I don't have to say anything we imagine that Sahitim doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the time of the time. I don't think it exists. It doesn't exist An Introduction by Kamala Das I don't know politics, but I know the names of those in power and can repeat them like days of week or names of months beginning with Nehru. I am Indian, very brown, born in Malabar. I speak three languages, write in two, dream in one. 
Don't write in English, they said. English is not your mother tongue. Why not leave me alone, critics, friends, visiting cousins, every one of you. Why not let me speak in any language I like? The language I speak becomes mine, its distortions, its queernesses, all mine, mine alone. It is half English, half Indian. Funny, perhaps, but it is honest. It is as human as I am human, don't you see? It voices my joys, my longings, my hopes. And it is useful to me as cawing is to crows or roaring to the lions. It is human speech, the speech of the mind that is here and not there, a mind that sees and hears and is aware. Not the deaf, blind speech of trees and storm, or of monsoon clouds, or of rain, or of the incoherent mutterings of the blazing funeral pyre. I was child, and later they told me I grew, for I became tall. My limbs swelled, and one or two places sprouted hair. When I asked for love, not knowing what else to ask for, he drew a youth of sixteen into the bedroom and closed the door. He did not beat me, but my sad woman body felt so beaten. The weight of my breasts and womb crushed me. I shrank pitifully. Then I wore a shirt and my brother's trousers cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness. Dress in saris, be girl, be wife, they said. Be embroiderer, be cook, be a quarreler with servants. Fit in, oh belong, cried the categorizers. Don't sit on walls or peep in through our lace draped windows. Be Amy or be Kamala, or better still, be Madhavi Kuti. It is time to choose a name, a role. Don't play pretending games. Don't play at schizophrenia or be a nympho. Don't cry embarrassingly loud when jilted in love. I met a man, loved him. Call him not by any name. He is every man who wants a woman, just as I am every woman who seeks love. In him, the hungry haste of rivers. In me, the ocean's tireless waiting. Who are you? I ask each and every one. The answer is, it is I. Anywhere and everywhere. I see the one who calls himself I. In this world, he is tightly packed like the sword in its sheath. It is I who drink lonely drinks at twelve midnight in hotels of strange towns. It is I who laugh. It is I who make love and then feel shame. It is I who lie dying with a rattle in my throat. I am sinner, I am saint, I am the beloved and the betrayed. I have no joys that are not yours, no aches which are not yours. I too call myself I. Greetings everyone, I am Kostav Jayataj and today I am here to talk about one of India's most influential women, Miss Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy has not only written numerous thought-provoking books and articles, but has also indulged in acting and is also a major political activist. She is best known for the award-winning novel The God of Small Things, which came out in 1997 and for her involvement in environmental and human rights causes. Arundhati Roy was born on November 24, 1961 and has studied architecture at the Delhi School of Architecture. However, she had little interest in design and instead dreamed of a writing career. Roy had co-starred in a couple films before her big break, which had earned her a devoted following. However, her literary career was interrupted by controversy. In 1995, she wrote two newspaper articles claiming that Shekhar Kapoor's film Bandit Queen exploited Furan Devi, who was one of India's most wanted criminals and a heroine of the oppressed.
which caused a major uproar, including a court case. Due to this, Arundhati Roy retreated from the public and returned to the novel she had begun to write. In 1997, Roy finally had her big break with the release of The God of Small Things, which became an almost immediate bestseller. It was composed in a lyrical language about South Asian themes and characters in a narrative that wandered through time. Roy's novel was and still is the biggest selling novel by a non-expatriate Indian and it won the 1998 Man Booker Prize for fiction. Other than this, Roy's literary output mainly consists of politically oriented non-fiction and much of it is aimed at addressing the problems of her homeland. Among her publications are The Cost of Living, a highly critical attack on the Indian government for its handling of the Narmada Dam project and its nuclear testing programs. Then Power Politics, which is a book of essays, and The Algebra of Infinite Justice, which is a collection of journalism. Roy was also active in various environmental and human rights causes, often putting herself at odds with Indian legal authorities and the country's middle class establishment. One such incident occurred while Roy was leading efforts to prevent the construction of dams in Narvada. A group of supporters of the project accused her of attacking them at a protest in 2001. Though the charges were dropped, she was convicted of contempt of court the next year after a petition for dismissal of the charges offended Supreme Court judges with his abusive tone. She was fined and sentenced to a day of imprisonment. In recognition of her outspoken advocacy of human rights, Roy was awarded the Landon Cultural Freedom Prize in 2002, the Sydney Peace Prize in 2004, and the Sahitya Academy Award from the Indian Academy of 